guys welcome back to this place and if you are new then welcome here for the very first time i am carmen i'm calvin and today we are watching season two episode two of avatar the last airbender and i may or may not have seen what the title was like five seconds ago but <laughs> anyway where we pick we're gonna pick up where we left off last week <laughs> which is with Zuko and Iroh on the run. They are in, they're disguised, but also there's more to why they cut their hair off, which we talked about in the last episode. So if you haven't seen it or the post episode discussion, go back and watch that. And okay, so that's where they are. We have Aang and Katara and Sokka. Wait, what happened with them? Oh yeah, okay. So with Aang and Katara and Sokka, sorry, I was like, I couldn't remember. They went to the really stupid guy who tried to get Aang to go into the Avatar state, which he succeeded, but at what cost really, you know? And they were supposed to be the escort to Omashu, but now Aang, Sokka, and Katara were like, um, all right, peace out, dude, you're a fucking idiot. We're just gonna go by ourselves with Appa, so and Momo, obviously, of course. So yeah, that's where we are. So anything else? Oh yeah, Azula. We met Azula, Zuko's sister. Not a fan. Long and short of it, not a fan. Um, that's the long of it? Yeah, that's the long of it. <laughs> I am not a fan. There, longer. And this is too rambly. I'm sorry. Let's just get into the episode. Yeah? Okay. Let me see your stance. Your arms are too far apart. See, if you move them closer together, you protect your center. You got it? Oh, oh gosh. Yes. Here we go. Thanks. They're in their underwear. I know. Oh, that's cool. You make a fine octopus, pupil Ang. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I'm Chong, and this is my wife Lily. We're nomads. Happy to go wherever the wind takes us. You guys are nomads? Okay. <sighs> what? I didn't find anything to eat. Uncle, what huh? are you doing? It's so weird to see him with his hair like You're that. You're looking mm -hmm. at the rare white dragon bush. Its leaves make a tea so delicious it's heartbreaking. Oh, it's the white jade bush, which is poisonous. We need food, um, not tea. I'm going fishing. Kind of important to know the difference. Mm, delectable tea or deadly poison? He's gonna risk it. Aww. Oh my god. <laughs> it's all best. <laughs> what do you think it was? I thought it was like a horse or something. Uh, There's a waterfall that creates a never ending rainbow. They would have definitely got a wood stock. Wet blanket here. Sounds like someone's got a case of destination fever. <laughs> <laughs> you're worried too much about where you're going. I mean, to be fair, you gotta focus less on the wind, super important. More on the going. Where they're going. Oh, well, sounds like you're headed to Omashu. What? There's an old story really about a secret that? pass right through the mountains. Is he gonna say, Two "Oh God"? <laughs> lovers forbidden from one another. A war divides their people. I like. I dig off his hair though. <laughs> Just gonna dance. Enjoy it. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. Oh god. I don't think I'll be comfortable. Secret love cave, let's go. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> That's the tiniest little fish. I did. And it wasn't. I knew he was gonna risk it. When the rash spreads to my throat, I will stop breathing. But look what I found! These are pakui berries, known to cure the poison of the white jade plant. Or? That or makaole berries that cause blindness. We're not taking any more chances with these plants! He needs to stop, yeah. <laughs> it's making me itch. The curse says that only those that trust in love can make it through the caves. Otherwise, you'll be trapped in them forever. And die. Oh yeah, 
and die. And die. So all you need is to trust and love to get through these caves? That is correct, like, Master Earlhead. <laughs> Gentle breeze. <laughs> we can make it. See, I knew it. Counting <laughs> torches. I don't know how it's that bright anyway. Oh, Alpha doesn't okay. like it. We'll be fine. I hope. Chong, how long do those torches last? Uh, about two hours each. And we have five torches, so that's ten hours. It not doesn't if you work like that all at the same time. time. You two must not be from around here. Cupping. <laughs> we know better than to touch the white jade, much less make it into tea and drink it. <laughs> oh my god. So where are you traveling from? Get worse. Yes, we're travelers. Do you have names? Uh, names? Of course we have names. I'm Lee. And this is my uncle, Mushi. Yes, my nephew was named after his father, so we just call him Junior. Mushi and Junior, huh? <laughs> my name is Song. My mom always makes too much roast duck. Where do you live exactly? <laughs> When I was a little girl, the Fire Nation raided our farming village. All the men were taken away. That was the last time I saw my father. I haven't seen my father in many years. Oh, is he fighting in the war? Yeah. Not really the same, though. Is that a person? <laughs> would be kind of scary. You have us. <laughs> He's like digs faster. <laughs> this is this could be cool. Like this could be join you? interesting for I know what you've been through. Zuko to have to We've face what it. the Fire Nation does to like these. Fire Nation has hurt you. It's okay. They've hurt me too. Oh. Yeah, having to face it first hand. Aqua is like, I'm getting the F out of here, okay? Like, I'm done. It was a door. It's a two. Oh, was it? Mm-hmm. Is that he just smashed through the wall? They met on top of the mountain that divided their two villages. The villages were enemies, so they could not be together. But their love was strong, and they I mean, found a way. The two lovers learned earthbending from the badger moles. They oh. became the first earthbenders. They built elaborate tunnels so that they could meet secretly. That's cool. Anyone who tried to follow them would be lost forever in the labyrinth. But one day, the man didn't come. Mm -hmm. He died in the war between their two villages. Oh. Devastated, the woman unleashed a terrible display of her earthbending power. She could have destroyed them all, but instead she declared the war over. Both villages helped her build a new city where they would live together in peace. Oh. The woman's name was Oma, and the man's name was Shu. Omashu. The great city was named Omashu as a monument to their love. That's cool. Love is brightest in the dark. That's a cool. This At least great. I'm thinking of ideas and trying to get us out of here, Moku. Yeah. Oh, wait okay. a minute. If love is the key out of here, then all we need to do is play a love song. <laughs> Momo's like, I'm done. I have a crazy idea. Never mind. It's too crazy. Katara, what is it? Don't look I at was me. thinking. <laughs> the curse says we'll be trapped in here forever unless we trust in love. And here it says love is brightest in the dark and has a picture of them kissing. Where are you going with this? What if we kissed? Us kissing? See, it was a crazy Don't idea. Don't pretend you're not into it, Aang. Kissing. There you go. Us kissing. 
What was I thinking? I definitely wouldn't want to kiss you. Okay, well, don't say that. Well, I didn't realize it was such a horrible option. No, no, I mean, if it was a choice between idiot. kissing you and dying. <gasps> what? What? I'm saying I would rather kiss you than die. That's a compliment. How? I know you don't think there's any hope left in the world, but there is hope. The Avatar has returned. I know. I think he feels guilty and that's why he's leaving so quickly. You can't steal their little what are you doing? bird horse. These people just showed you great kindness. They're about to show us a little more kindness. That's mean. Aww. And what are we gonna do? Just kiss. What can we do? <laughs> You're over it already. Mm hmm That's pretty. To the wolf bat thing again. Oh. Plural. Oh my gosh, those things are crazy. Where are they all going? Hey, you saved us, Saka. He did nothing. No, they were trying to get away from something. Ah. Uh -huh. <gasps> the badger thing. They're earth benders, right? Like music? Just be like <laughs> Badger moles coming toward me. Come on guys, help me out. The big bad badger moles who earth in the tunnels. Hate the wolf bats, but love the sounds. <laughs> that must be the way out. So um let's go. So we're just not going to talk about what just happened. Um... <laughs> He's so happy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, they're talking. Mm -hmm. That's cute. Even if you're lost, you can't lose the love because it's in your heart. I find it annoying, but also slightly catchy. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I present to you the I'm Earth King kind of City nervous. of Om. Oh no. Yeah. I had a feeling. <sighs> So, mm -hmm. what about that episode? I really liked it. Okay. <laughs> yeah? Like, you know that I do not ship Aang and Katara. Although, you know, based off of the story, I f have a feeling that they're going to be endgame or whatever you want to call it, you know. Do you know what endgame is? It just means they're yeah. the couple that's going to end up together. Not like Avengers endgame. Did you? Hmm? Do you? Why? I don't know. It just seems... And lame. Okay, look who's who's saying that. The person who <laughs> just made that joke. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, babe. You're not. Lame. But um, I don't know. Like, I didn't. Hate, I didn't hate it in this episode. Like, I. They're not like a no TP for me. I guess maybe, but like. What's TP? It's like OTP is like one true pairing. No TP is like ew. I don't like that. Sorry, I'm using shippery terms and you don't understand, but... I'm sorry, I didn't spend <laughs> as much time as you on the internet. Anyway, it's something that I've, like, accepted, kind of, right? Like, I understand that they're probably going to be the couple that gets together. And, like, I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's just... It, I accept that that's where the story is going to go, you know? Mm -hmm. I do think it's interesting, though, and I'm sure that, like if I was a shipper, I would find it kind of annoying, is the fact that, like, they waited until the flame went out to for them to kiss. So, like, as the viewer, you don't get to see it, which, as a shipper, I would find very offensive, like, if I shipped them, because I'd be like, where is my kiss, you know? Because, like, you always want to see the kiss, like, the first kiss of your couple, you know, the ones that you ship together. 
You think they kissed? Yes, of course they kissed. You don't think so? Like their scene, faces. I don't think they... <laughs> their faces were going together. Our cat's reaching her paw through the door. She's so cute. <laughs> their faces were going together, and then it lit up. You don't think they kissed? No. Why? I don't. Why? Because, like. Cause spoilers. You're gonna let me finish. And spoil you, apparently. <laughs> She's still fishing her little poster. I know. It's so cute. Um, and the light went out, and they were, like, facing each other. They were, like, this close. And then They weren't a- that close. They were, like, this close. And then it started glowing, was, and they like, were, like, facing opposite directions almost. Yeah, they had gone real quick, and then were no. looking, and it's like... I mean, if, if that's what you think, you can think that. I feel like since you've seen the show, you're telling me that that's an incorrect interpretation. But having never seen the show, perhaps they didn't kiss, but it seemed like they did based off of this. Although, I mean, I was a stupid kid once and had almost that kind of same argument with uh, a guy that I liked. So I understand completely how that argument could happen. But like, Aang, (laughs) the girl you like is offering to kiss you like, this, don't play it off. No, yeah, like, don't be like. I'm, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess. Like the choice between like death kissing you. Mm, it's a hard one, but I think I would kiss you. Like, no, that's horrible. That's that's not at all what a girl who she is wouldn't. That, have, is that how you put it to him? Well, he was like, I was talking to him on the phone, and he was like, "Bloody blah said that you liked me," and I was like. What? No. Ew. I don't like you. Which I did like him, so it was really stupid to say. I don't think I said ew, but I said it in a very offended way. <laughs> so great. Which was stupid because I did like him. And then his response was, well, good, because I don't like you either. And then he hung up. So, you know, it didn't work out. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh... I'm, I'm saying that because I understand that the desire to do that when you're a kid because you're like embarrassed and put on the spot and you're like yeah no totally i don't want to kiss you ha ha hilarious that's just you know (sighs) but it's just real stupid because like she wouldn't have offered it as a suggestion if it wasn't something that she was okay with happening in the first place you know Mm -hmm. but of course as a child again you're your brain's not quite developed enough to understand that you know you're just like you know he's like presented with the one thing that he wants more than anything and so he's like, like freaking yeah. out about it, you know? And then when she laughs, which she was laughing because he took such a long pause when she suggested it, you know? Nervous laughter. Yeah. So she's nervously laughing and then he takes that as offensively and then she takes that offensively. Then the whole thing was, yeah. Anyway. I think he was trying to play it off like, oh, <laughs> yeah, good joke. Mm-hmm. And then like. And then like she was he, like, oh. And then she got upset because she's like, oh, so you think, like, even the idea of kissing me is hilarious, like, so offensive to you, you know, and then, yeah. What? You? No. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That sort of thing. Although I will say I really, really, really loved the the tie-in of the lovers and Omashu and, like, Mm -hmm. was they said her name was Oma. And his mm-hmm. name was Shu, and then together it's Omashu, which is, I just think that's a really cool, like, origin story of this town, this place, and... City. City. Excuse me, I know there's lots it's of... A, it's like a fortress city. No, I know there's a difference in, like, towns and cities based off population and all that stuff, but I just use them interchangeably. I don't really... Yeah. Anyway, this... <laughs> kingdom of Omashu, kind of, I guess, really, well, honestly, because it has, like, a whole freaking thing around it and everything so i mean it has a king so it has to be a kingdom. the earth kingdom but omashu isn't wasn't Bumi like, the king of omashu yeah but it's not like Bumi is the king of the earth kingdom no clearly He's just that's like the king of the city my point was like i also think it's really cool how like they had uh the badgers right they, they were badgers the giant badgers badger moles badger moles and they actually were the original earthbenders. And these two lovers like went to the caves to hide and they learned earthbending from these badgers, you know. Well, they learned right. earthbending and then made the caves. Yeah, but so they went they down, eat. they went somewhere to hide, 
where the badgers were, which taught them earthbending. And then they created the maze so they yeah. could go away to be together and stuff. Which Yeah, they were the first earthbenders. Yeah. Which, Human earthbenders. I like how it was a bit Romeo and Juliet-esque. Of course, I'm not saying that it's based off of Romeo and Juliet. There's plenty of forbidden love stories prior to Romeo and Juliet that Romeo and Juliet is based off of. So, But that's the vibe it got gave me at first, you know, like dueling. I just like mm-hmm. the whole story in general. It's kind of like the um, story from last season with UA and the moon and how the moon controls you know, the tides, and so it's, like, the first waterbender Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Like, I really like the sort of, well, not sort of, I really like the detail and the creativity that kind of goes into these stories, Mm -hmm. right? Like, the history of Omashu, like, could have, like, they never really had to tell us that or, like, sort of use that as a story. But, like, the fact that they thought of that and they put it together and they told us in this kind of cool interesting way like I really like that yeah and maybe it's just me but maybe the show is growing up with the audience too because just the first two episodes of this season already seem to be like making a more of a adult shift like you know Mm -hmm. like not for adults but still like young adults as opposed to children yeah. Like it's the the stories are getting more complicated and nuanced, and the characters are getting more. And it's not compli- so much. I mean, like, they always were, but they're still. And it's not so much like introducing a character to this situation, and here's the message. Yeah. It's it's more like well, there's a there's a lesson to be learned here. Will the character learn it? Like the audience may have learned it, you know. Yeah, like just like the weird druggy hippie singing guitar guy right like he's a free spirit he might not be on drugs druggy hippie is also maybe he's just real relaxed and chill i'm just saying he would fit in at woodstock back in the you know 60s right 69 my dad almost went to woodstock fun fact he was actually he's very upset that he did not get to go He still talks about it. <laughs> like, he almost went, but then he couldn't. For some reason, I can't remember why. That would suck. Anyway, my dad is not like that guy. <laughs> Although, maybe in the 70s, he was. I don't know. That was quite a long time before I was born. Maybe. <laughs> uh, what, what was it that he said? Yeah, he used to smoke 20 joints a day. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I don't think he I did. I don't think he did, but... But... <laughs> <sighs> it was the seventies. That's always his. Yeah. His. <laughs> it's like, have you ever taken any drugs? <laughs> it was the seventies. I think he 70s. did say that at yeah. like a doctor's appointment once. That's what you said. Yeah. yeah. It's like the nurse was going through like medical history and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, we don't care if you took drugs in the seventies. <laughs> yeah. It's like we need to know if you're like currently taking drugs. Yeah. Anyway, tangent aside, which you know. Welcome back to our tangents, I guess. Yeah. Um, I know at least Adrian missed them, so hey, Adrian. <laughs> um, Stop cutting them out. Mm-hmm. We have way more that she cuts out. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> no, these would be like hour-long discussions if she didn't cut them out, so it's it's for the best. Trust yeah, me. but I do leave some in, so. Yeah. I only, ones. yeah, exactly. Did you like the new characters that we were introduced to? Uh, the band or, yeah. okay, yeah. Um, I was going to say, because you were talking about like the message and then, you know, mm-hmm. how that was a bit more last season, right? You know, and I think like the kind of on the surface message of like guitar guys, like, Oh, and, you know, well, Journey, Not Destination 1, mm-hmm. which, yeah, that's kind of, like, just a good thing to think about in life, you know? Like, a road trip is always, well, not always, but sometimes really fun because you can, like, stop, like, if you can, like, properly stop in little towns and just, like, see the country and stuff like that, then it's fun. When you just have to get to point A to point B, not so much. Mm-hmm. But... His overall message was that, and then also, like, love. But I feel like he had, like, like his, not subliminal message, because he's not, like, you know, <laughs> trying to, you know, get into there. But, like, the 
more subtle message is that like, you know, Sokka had to deal with this guy and maybe he's not his favorite person, you know, he's kind of annoying and all that stuff. But if you actually work with people maybe that you don't always even get along with and you can see that they have something valuable to offer, then together you can think of a solution. Because the whole time they were just butting heads and butting heads and butting heads and not listening to each other and kind of talking over and at each other. And then finally at the end when the badgers came and he starts singing and that guy starts singing and then they work together, they got out of the cave, you know? <laughs> they mm -hmm. both rode the badgers and they got out of the cave. Yeah. So I think that's kind of a cool, I don't know if that's the intended message, but it kind of seemed like it might be like a little bit of a more subtle message. Also like, you know, valuing, valuing someone's skills and stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not perfect for this situation, but there's a situation in which, you know, it is a useful skill. Yeah. Well, and just not not looking down on someone because they're different. Than the you. skill that they happen to be good at right now isn't useful to you. Yeah, and they're just different from you. You know, yeah. like hippie guy. Um, Chong. you know what? Chong. Chong, and like his his life might be D. Bradley Baker. Yeah, I was wondering when you were going to notice that. Why does that sound so familiar? He voices Appa. Appa? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Appa's a hippie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he voices a lot of people. No, but he's from something else. What is he from? D. Bradley Baker? Yes. I've... I mean, he also voices a lot of people in the Clone Wars. Okay, I think that's where I've heard you talk about him before. Yeah. Anyway. Also, before we get too far, Moku. Derek Basco. Yeah, who's that? It's the brother of Dante Basco, who voices Prince Zuko. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Anyway, what I was going to say was, like, the hippie guy, uh, his life and Sokka's life are very different, and their look, their outlook on life is very different. The way they lead their life is very mm -hmm. different, obviously. But... That doesn't make one of them right and one of them wrong, which I think this kind of showed, right? It's just like, this is his life and this is how he's living it. And this is Sokka's life and this is how he's living it. And they both found a way to get out of the cave, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. And it's like, I like that there's like no judgment. Like, I know it might sound like we're being a little bit judgy or I am being a little bit judgy to the hippie guy, which I'm not at all. Like, I thought he was funny and cool and like, oh, yeah. it's you know. a lot of fun. Like, he would have fit right in on Dazed and Confused. <laughs> but um, I thought he was fun, yeah. And his songs, weirdly catchy. Like, I'm yeah. not going to lie. Like, like, annoying in the way yeah. that, like, a good song will get stuck in your head and then annoy you for the rest of the day because you know, like, half of a verse and three words. Yeah. And you sing that over and over and over again, not knowing the rest of the verse, and drive yourself crazy. It's like that. Yeah, like I'm, I definitely feel like I'm going to be singing these ridiculous little songs. <laughs> By the way, Secret Tunnel is a meme song. Is it? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, Secret Tunnel. Like that's going to be stuck tunnel. in my head because it's ridiculous. Secret Tunnel. But I do like, I did really like the, just them being included in the story, you know. Although I'm curious, he never finished the song that he sang at the beginning about, I can't remember, but it was something like, don't fall in love with a traveling girl because then she'll leave you or something like that and then i was like oh somebody left him and then he's like oh this is my wife and i'm like well, who was that song about now i'm curious like you know <laughs> anyway i don't know but uh omashu is under fire nation control now yeah i know i saw that like i don't it's got to be azula i assume i mean it's obviously not zuko and i because they're still on the run yeah but um I wonder where Boomy is, if he's okay, if he's being weird somewhere, you know, like, what? <laughs> Making puns. Yeah. Amazing, glorious puns. Mm, not sure I would use those words to describe the, the, I forgot how to talk, the puns. Who am I, who am I to judge? I can't even freaking talk. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, I also would like to say that if Oppo would like to come to my house, you know, there's no caves. It's perfectly safe. Everything's above ground. I will take good care of you. You probably won't fit anywhere because you're ginormous. But 
Yep. There's a park nearby. <laughs> like, you would crush the garage. <laughs> anyway, speaking of Omashu being under siege in the Fire Nation, I said it a little bit during the episode, but I really like Zuko and Iroh going to the town and having to sort of come face to face really with consequences of what the Fire Nation has done and is currently doing, which they haven't really had to do so far, you know? Yeah. And I like that Iroh obviously was a little bit affected by it. You know, mm -hmm. he's like, these people were so kind to you, like, like at the end when he's taking the horse bird thing. And I think that even though I'm disappointed in Zuko for doing that, I think that partially why he did it is because he feels guilty. And I know that doesn't seem to make sense, but I think it's like, he's trying not to feel guilty. He's trying to like separate his self from well, it's those like when, feelings. And so he's just trying to be like, the Fire Nation would do this. I'm just going to do this. It's like when the unwilling hero is a dick to the, to the person that needs saving at first. You know, mm -hmm. it's like trying to teach them, you know, people aren't going to take care of you just because you need taken care of. Yeah. And I think he felt a little bit guilty that they were treating him so well. Because they didn't know the because truth. Because they didn't know the truth. And maybe by doing that, it might maybe clue them in Yeah. a bit. It's like, give them the hint that, you know, he's not a great guy. You know, you shouldn't be helping people like him. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think is necessarily true, but I think that that's how he currently feels about himself. Yes. So I think that... That's why I'm saying it's, it's yeah. from his perspective. Yeah, no, I know. But I think that I hope that Song comes back because I did really like her and her mom. Mm -hmm. That was her name, right? Yeah. And mom. Her mom's name is Mom. I was trying to figure out what her mom's name was, but nope. that's all it yep. does. <laughs> yeah, but I really liked her and I don't know. I think that it's good to see, and I think it's good for Zuko to see, even if he's not reconciling it right now, that there are still people out there who are good and are willing to do good, even when bad's been done to them. The part of um, Iroh just being like, hmm, could be poison, but could be delicious tea. Gotta risk it, you know? It's, yeah. It's just so Iroh. Like, of course he would do that. And the, the antidote that could also cause blindness. And he was just going to eat it. He's like, yeah. mm, I'm hungry. <laughs> and then when, like, the animation of him with, like, the, the big circle cheeks and, like... Yeah. That was really funny. I, li I enjoyed that. So... I think it's interesting because we know that there are the flyers for them. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of expecting that they would recognize Zuko because of the scar. Like if, if the flyers were in that town, but I guess the flyers aren't in that town yet. Like, cause I was kind of expecting there to be something like that. Maybe if, like when he took his hat off or something, you know, that they might see and yeah. understand. And well, the flyers would be posted in the fire nation because that's where they would be interested in catching them. And also anywhere in the earth nation where the, or the earth kingdom where the fire nation has taken over and is occupying. They... Okay, well, I guess they're not occupying that place anymore. But they took over because she said that they took her father, and that's the last time she saw him. Yeah, they had attacked, and they had, they had taken a bunch of the men and stuff. But I don't think they were currently under... And besides which, like... Okay, so we're being occupied by I mean, they have no someone. interest like, in... Like, are we going to be keeping our eye out for people yeah. who are enemies of... Exactly. Regime. I was going to say, they would have no interest in turning people in who were being purported to be traitors of the Fire Nation. You know, yeah. like there's no motivation for that really. But I don't know. I think it's it's really cool. It was really cool to see Iroh and Zuko sort of, like I said, have to come face to face with the reality of who they are. Even if it's not who they are, it's kind of who they are, if that makes sense. Because it's... It's a difference of who they are and what they're responsible for. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's... Like, they themselves wouldn't do those terrible things, but the but the Fire Nation has, and they are... Of the Fire Nation. And, I mean, they're not even 
Well, they're kind of banned. Well, now they're definitely not. But before, they were doing everything in the name of the Fire Nation, and they still kind of yeah. are. And so anything that is being done in the name of the Fire Nation, and they're trying to bring glory, whatever, to the Fire Nation, is sort of, like you said, their responsibility. They're allowing this to happen in a way. Not super, because Ozai is literally the ruler of the Fire Nation, and he's, you know... The one who's giving the orders to do all this stuff. But it's like they're complicit in it, rather, I would say. Yeah. If anything. Yeah, because, I mean, Ozai, he's not a great guy. And he's also allowing a whole bunch of other people who are really bad people. Admiral Asshole, for example. Like Admiral Zhao. Asshole. To make those calls. Mm -hmm. And to, you know, make those kind of... um, or Azula, who... Or Azula, yeah. Obviously, again, not a great person, at least not from what we've seen of her. Mm-mm. I'm not going to say that she couldn't become good at some point, but... Right. Just what we know of her now, she's yeah not. But, you know, they're, they're making those kind of um, tactics... Acceptable. Acceptable. And pushing those, those kind of punishments on their occupied peoples. Yeah. So... Exactly. I am still excited to see where Zuko goes from here. I do hope that he can continue to sort of be faced with the reality of who the Fire Nation is and what he kind of stood for when he was a part of the Fire Nation and hopefully get disillusioned by that and understand, with the help of Iroh, why it's not great, you know? And come to... Ambulance. Yeah. Um, And come to, you know, Team Avatar's side. But we're going to have to see. I am curious now, like, my guess would be that Aang and Sokka and Katara are going to try to mount some sort of rescue of Boomy, maybe, if he's in there. Um, Because, one, Aang needs to learn earthbending. Two, they're friends. Three, it's just, you know, kind of who they are, trying to help people and everything. Mm-hmm. And Good practice for later for Aang. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to see where they go with that. Of course, like I said, that's where I think they're going to go, but I don't know. And I'm excited to see where Zuko and Iroh are going on this weird horse bird. And hopefully learning more lessons along the way. Mm-hmm. That's all I have to say. Is that all you have to say for now? Yeah. Pertains to this episode? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you want, you can like, subscribe, comment, do all of the cool things. If you want to see the next episode right now, you can over on my Patreon, which is linked in the description down below. Uh, Yeah. Until next time. Bye, guys. Bye.